So you can click on View Steps on any one of these to see what these steps are. So for example, in the Monthly Neighborhood Nurture, it sends them a Monthly Neighborhood Nurture email. That Monthly Neighborhood Nurture email is the information on the neighborhoods that we just assigned to that contact. And it's a link to their website that we just created. And then it waits four weeks, and then it sends them another monthly neighborhood nurture. That's the whole plan. Now, the one next to it, the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, is for somebody who's probably raised their hand and is a slightly more, more of a hot lead than the monthly neighborhood nurture because they're getting an email from you every two weeks, right? And then the quarterly call plan is exactly what it says it is. It's going to send you a reminder to call your contact. It will wait 90 days and then send you another reminder to call your contact. My suggestion is that part of you getting... Hey, Julie, is that a question? Oh, thank you. Marissa, what's your question? I'm oh, sorry, I might have the same question. Oh, no, she just wants to get it. Oh, so you just click on... Click on okay. 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 Yeah. I'm doing it tonight. Yeah. 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 There you go. Click on the she word smart plan. No, click okay. on the word smart plan. It's not the circle underneath it. You were clicking on the circle. Oh, okay. got it. All right. So, uh, the quarterly call plan. The best thing that you can do for yourself is schedule 10 minutes every single day for the next 90 days. And every single day, add 10 people to this plan. Because every day you should be calling a minimum of 10 people, right? And if you add all of your contacts to this right now, you're going to get what I got, which is you're going to wake up tomorrow and have Kelly reminding you to call 276 people tomorrow. Don't do that. Right. You want to call 10 people a day. If you call 10 people a day, five days a week, every single month, you will be calling 600 people a quarter. If you have more than 600 people in your database, you're going to need to call more than 10 people a day. So how do you separate, and instead of adding all contacts, how do you separate that? Um, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so there's a, a little weird glitch that happened with yesterday's push out. I'm going to talk to tech support to get that fixed hopefully this week. Um, right from the quarterly call plan, go to add contacts and come in here and just say um, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, and then say add to smart plan. And then just make a note that the person you left off today was Aaron Coleman, and then tomorrow start at Amy J. Mendez, and 1, 2, 3, 3, yeah. Is there a possibility that you make notes for each person? Absolutely there is, and I will show you how to do that in a second. Okay, and can you, you cannot combine the long and mid, mid term. Yeah, we're going to use that in a second. So, yep, yeah. jump on it, thank you. Thanks for coming to this meeting. All right, so any questions on why you don't want to add all of your contacts to this plan today, or we all that make sense? Okay, great. So, yes, yeah, so that's my suggestion. As part of your habit of using command every day, because this is going to be telling you what to do for your business, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, as soon as your consumers get that mobile app in their hands, this is also going to be letting you know, hey, Cynthia, Bobby Joe uh, just added a neighborhood. She currently lives in Gilroy, and all of her neighborhoods are in the Gilroy neighborhood. She just added a neighborhood up in Sunnyvale. You should probably call her, because it sounds like she either wants to purchase an investment property in Sunnyvale, wants to move to Sunnyvale, or has a family member that she was showing them, here's what Sunnyvale looks like. Either way, that's worth a phone call. And so this is going to remind you and your task managers, hey, heads up, you should call Bobby Joe today. So question. Yes. On this. Yes. So... If I click 10 people today, then in... And add them to the plan. When you say click 10 people, people mm -hmm. you would say add to smart plan, right? Mm -hmm. Add to smart plan. Perfect, okay. okay. Then, um, then um, in three months, the people I click today, in three months from today, will pop up. Well, tomorrow they will. Tomorrow they will. Okay, so here when you click on View Steps on any of these smart plans, it tells you what the steps are in the smart plan. Mm -hmm. And here the very first step is a reminder for you to call them. And that will happen tomorrow. You will get a reminder here in Task Manager or on your Kelly app to call them tomorrow. Because you need to call them, right? And then it's going to wait 90 days, and then it's going to give you another reminder to call them. 
Does that make sense? Kind of. Like, what if I call 10 people today and I mark that I call them today? I call them today. And then did you add them to a smart plan? Yes. Yeah, so if I so then you're going to get a reminder tomorrow to call them. So I'll call them today. So you so okay, so wait, call them. Yeah, so you're okay. them today. Yes, yeah, so let's have this conversation. Yvonne, I'm, gonna, I, I'm talking to you right now. I'm going to go into my contacts and I'm going to say, hey, I have a meeting with Yvonne today. Cool, that's great because I'm keeping track of who I have communications with, this yeah. is keeping track of my emails, is doing all that for me. And in addition to that, you're on a smart plan that's reminding me to call you every 90 days. Right. So I'm still going to get that reminder to call you, irrespective of anything else that I've done with you. So it doesn't. So this is not checking to say, oh, you already called them sometime within the last 90 days. No, no, this is giving you once a quarter. You're doing a quarterly check-in with them at a bare minimum a quarterly check-in. Does that make sense? Yeah, but okay. why would I? Why would it give me a tag to call them off? Because you said you told me that you were just adding someone to a smart plan. Yeah. And a smart plan that is first step is reminding you to call somebody. To call. It's reminding you to call someone. Okay. So then we. The, the, so don't call her disregard the or just don't call her today. She's confused because yeah, I said that. she's only so yeah, yeah, no, no, she's yeah. checking yeah. today. Yeah, I give her a So don't call someone today. Don't do it. Okay, but let's just say I've talked to somebody and I want to add them to this, and I'm going to add them. I'm going to talk to you guys today. Okay. And I want to add you today because I talked to you. Um, then sure, go ahead and mark off tomorrow's task list item as completed. When I enter, or tomorrow, tomorrow when it pops up, right. you, go, okay. you, you can go. But it's still going to pop up. It's still pop up. Because the system said you told me to remind you. It's doing what you're telling it to do, mm -hmm. and that's giving you a reminder every 90 days. Whether you actually do what it's reminding you to do or not is completely up to you. No, I, I mean, I have a task in my reminder um, telling me that I have to take my coffee machine that's broken into the coffee repair guy. Right. I haven't done that yet. That's my choice. But the system did what it was supposed to do, which was reminding me. So if you call the person tomorrow, right, and this person doesn't answer, and you can call this person in two days, can you still put them in that plan, plan to remind you to call them in two you days? You can put anybody into any plan at any time that you want, that it's completely up to you. There is not a plan yet to remind you every two days to call someone, if that's what you're uh, asking. Yeah. Can I set myself a reminder on its own to call somebody in two days? Yeah, absolutely I can. I can do that in Task Manager. I can I, I do that with you guys. Um, and but more about here. You can all no, right. Yeah. These are just smart plans. We're just in one teeny piece right now. We haven't yet started going into Task Manager. Right. Sure. right. Okay. Which is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We are just looking at okay. smart plans right now. Okay. So we talked about the monthly neighborhood or two smart plan, which is one email how often? Monthly neighborhood nurture? Mm -hmm. Perfect, correct. The monthly neighborhood nurture is one email per monthly. So the bi weekly neighborhood nurture is one email how often? Which is called fortnightly. Oh. Is that from GLP? No, it is not. It is actually English. It's an English word. Uh, it's short for 14 nights, fortnightly. Uh, it's funny because I've heard two. So much no, I've heard two completely different people use that term within the last week and a half. Wow. It was on a lab call where they were talking about this, and one guy's like, I found out that that's called Fortnite, and I'm like, yes, I'm aware of that. I read Shakespeare. And then I was listening to a podcast about a, a political podcast, and they said something about something being Fortnightly, and I was like, I know, it's making a comeback. I like it. Okay. So, one email monthly, one email bi weekly or fortnightly, if you want to be pompous about it. Quarterly call plan is one phone call every 90 days, once a quarter, three months, perfect. So now we're going to take a look at the long-term nurture. You will, if somebody is on your long-term nurture, do not put them on other plans. Because if you look at the few steps, the long-term nurture has them getting a monthly neighborhood nurture already. It has them already getting a phone call from you checking in. It has them already getting a text message and an email from you. Do not put them on other plans. This has a lot going on in it already. Right? Right. They just need the one plan. So if you have a hub leads, you actually put them in long-term nurture. If you have past clients, you can put it on quarterly. Okay. So if I had a hot lead, mm -hmm. I would be putting them 
probably, like, what's the, I'm sorry, uh, that's subjective. When you say a hot leaf, how quickly does a hot leaf want to buy or sell? Like, within a month, 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 okay, within okay, the next six months. So yeah. you use the one that is then set for three to six months. Okay. Right? Um, this is, somebody wants to do something that's three to six months, that's, <coughs> that, in my head, a hot leaf is somebody who needs to do something now. No. I just found out that my spouse is getting relocated to the Silicon Valley and our children are about to be homeless because our house sold faster than we thought it would. Mm -hmm. I need to buy a house now. To me, that's a hot lead. So like, which category would that be? So there isn't one for that. So yeah, for me on that, that one? Go right no, 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 right, that's, right. That's, that's me calling them every single day. That's what I'm saying. 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 You will remind you because things happen in life, right? So, so yes, 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 so, yes, 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 and yes, and yes, and yes. And that is where tax managers will come in. I can set up a thing for myself to check in every single morning. I can go on the MLS and I can set up hot sheets for them every single day. Right? I mean, it's. There isn't currently one for them yet. Okay. Um, and yes, I get where you're coming from. I'm right, I'm calling them every day. If they need to buy a house in the next 15 days, I don't need to put them on a smart plan to check in in 15 days because if I didn't find them a house, I just lost my job. Yeah. Okay. That question. So I'm trying to find the logic. How do smart plans relate to the uh, philosophy A by A that the business contact? Okay. So there's a couple of different things at play. You are getting two smart plans every two weeks. Because they're pushing these out over time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, picture rail for that. We're getting two new so these two smart plans just came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. These two smart plans came out two weeks ago. In another two weeks, we're getting an eight by eight, mm -hmm. and we're getting the birthday reminder where it sends something every birthday. You guys are talking about yesterday. Yes. So the eight by eight does not exist yet. Eight by eight requires and sellers comes out in two weeks. Now an eight by eight is a way to cement a relationship because you've been hearing about that in bold. Is that yeah. Okay. So that is when you first when you um, first make a contact. That is to build rapport. Eight okay. by eight. eight, 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 eight. Coming in two weeks. Okay. Ooh, it's obnoxiously loud. Uh, there we go. So this is for the specific contact mm -hmm. within the year. So hang, hang on. So that's. That's an 8x8, and we understand what that is used for. Mm -hmm. Should we wait two weeks for 8x8s to start if we meet somebody today? Yeah. No. Correct. Definitely not. Call them today. Set yourself a reminder to call them in a week. You can email them in five. Like you can, so please do not wait for these things to happen. Your business cannot wait for that. Yes. Okay. Great. A 36 touch map he's talking about, that's coming from the MREA2 research. So the Millionaire Real Estate Agent was written back in 2005. Have certain things happened in the economy and the real estate industry in the last 14 years? Are things a little bit different, not a lot, but a little bit different when it comes to conversion rates across the country? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. Um, so what's happening is that MREA2 research has been done, and they found that instead of doing a 33 touch, the most successful agents are doing 36 touches, which is what Maggie's talking about. Okay. 36 touches easy because what's uh, 12 months out of the year times three touches? 36 touches. Super easy. It's three touches a month. Right. So basically one every 10 days. Okay. So they're finding that instead of contacting people every 14 days, contact them every 10 days. And those are 36 touches. And so Maggie, if you look down here at these steps, it is happening every three of 10 days. Okay. This is a 36 touch. Okay. Yes. This is, oh yes, sorry, let me turn the light off. This is a 36 touch. Is the end of the long term? Uh, yes, that is the 6 to 12 month one. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I would put on for every single person that you would consider um, to have a potential client. Potential client at or past client. Anybody who may buy or sell a home or refer you business in the future, right? That is what the MREA tells us. Is you get somebody in your database, the second you consider them an actual connected contact, you put them on a 36 touch. Yes. I'm changing the subject, but it's kind of okay. the same line. Oh, okay. okay. <coughs> How do we incorporate our profit share? Great. Right. Not yet. Then we're going to come to that in a second. Okay. Okay. So does that make sense? <coughs> now you meet somebody at open house today. Don't put them on a 36 touch. 
necessarily is an 8 by 8 because you still need to build that relationship, build that rapport. If you bump into somebody at the grocery store and you don't recognize them, they shouldn't really be on a 36 touch. 36 touches are people who know you, like you, and would give you business. If somebody doesn't know who you are, chances are they wouldn't give you business, right? So in this long term, we'll send automatic emails to the neighborhood, and then you call and look out they send. Yeah, so if you stuff. click on the view steps, you'll see what all the steps are. So it's an email, mm -hmm. 10 days later a phone call, 10 days later another email that's called the value email that Keller Williams has created for you. 10 days later, it sends out a text. 10 days later, it sends out an email. They can automatically sent. The only thing that's not automatically done is call the phone call. Yeah. Right. And, and the reminder is automatically sent right. to you. You just have to actually call them. And Yvonne, could you choose to say, oh, you know, I called them two days ago. I don't need to call them today? Yeah, totally. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. It didn't make sense that they give it to you the next day. That's the only thing that doesn't make sense. It's okay. And that's because every single one of these smart plans okay. starts kind of like a contract. Today is day zero. Tomorrow is day one. Good right? Analogy. Thank you. So this is day and on the call one, that's just the first step that happens to be a phone call. Right? That's all. So it's the same process for all the smart plans. It's just that's the only one that it starts off with a phone call. The others all start off with emails. Okay. So you were talking about profit share. Yeah, so for the people that we're working on with profit share, um, I'm obviously agents, already agents, and yeah. then people that are Yeah. yeah. Well, how can we... So tell me, uh, when you were talking to somebody about joining Keller Williams and naming you as a sponsor when they join in the future, how are you communicating with them right now? Um, calls, inviting them to classes, text every once in a while. And are you doing this on a set cadence? Like no. you're making sure you call, check in with them every 15 days? No. Do you want to do that? Yes. So then you're going to use Task Manager currently. Because right now, only five plans exist. And the only one that is strictly uh, phone calls is quarterly, and that's probably not often enough. Now, could you set up one of those people in the monthly neighborhood nurture and say, hey, check out what we get to send to our clients. If you want to be able to do this with your clients, give me a call. Could you do that? Sure. Totally. Absolutely you could. Could you set them up on um, a midterm plan, which sends them an email every two weeks and a phone call? Or sorry, an email. Wait two weeks, phone call, wait two weeks, send a text. But, uh, sure, we, I know we could probably do that, but is there anything set just for... So these are the only share. five plans that currently exist. Okay. Remember, one month ago, there was only one plan. Okay. So they're giving us these, and they're giving them to us to help us build our businesses first. Right. Right. Then they're going to start throwing in stuff for profit share. Okay. Stuff for profit share that already exists is in SketchUp, and if we have time, we will get to that today. In SketchUp. Right. Yes, ma'am. And how is the long term yes. nurture relates to the other plans? Do oh, not set somebody else up on other plans. In fact, it won't let you. If you if there are long, long term, term or mid term. Okay. So who you put on the other plans? Yeah. Um so I would put monthly neighborhood nurture. Anybody who actually I would put the bi weekly neighborhood nurture, anybody who comes to an open house. Okay. I mean, I would probably put that on an eight by eight. But I would also put them on the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Because if they came to open houses and I had a conversation, even if it was brief, mm -hmm. but yeah, they actually, they weren't just on their way home to the grocery store and wanted to stop in to see what the neighbor's house was, you know, whatever. Yeah, I would put them on the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture because they want to buy and they're not currently working with an agent. Okay. Right? Because we don't want to solicit business or people okay. who are already yeah. working with agents. That is a huge no-no. Well, oh, many times they said that they are working with people, so if they agent, they, they don't. Okay, and you have to make the decision of if you or right. not. Right. Okay. Right. okay. But I would put open house people right now on the bi weekly neighborhood nurture, and I'd assign the neighborhood of where the open house was. Or I would also create a tag for them that was open house as my source, because I definitely want to start sourcing my business for sure, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I would use that, sorry. I would use a field of open house, because I'm going to create a source field for myself. Okay. And then I would put in a tag of open house dash one two three main street. And then everybody who comes into the open house with that one, I have created a tag that's specific to that. Because I'm going to send up certain messages to people just for that property, right? Yeah. I'm going to send up a reminder to myself using task manager 
to email all of these people in two days about that house. I'm going to call them all tomorrow. I'm going to do certain things for just this open house because I'm going to create an open house plan for myself. Right? Because do you have the same things that you do for people when they come to open house? You, you do the same sort of follow-up and you want to remind yourself to follow up. So you'll use the task manager until the smart plan exists. What did you just say? I need help with that. We all need help with that. And that's why we're in here today, because that's what we're doing today. The source field, I don't even know what that is. So source field, I need to... Yeah, so, what, so that's in contacts. When I said I need you to understand contacts, and that's a class in and of itself. So either watch the Connect the Live classes that are on contacts, and they're doing a couple a week, okay. or come to the once a month class that we have on contacts. It's, it's an hour, hour and a half class on just contacts. We don't have time to dive into all that today. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you need to get how contacts work. Okay. So these are the five smart plans that currently work, that are currently in existence, and there's two more coming every two weeks. So basically, you said that they're going to come with the uh, birthday uh, uh, plan. Yes, and yes. what about the anniversary of the birthday? Yeah, the home anniversary. So all I know is what's coming in two weeks. All right. I haven't been so given what's going to be combined two. The two. The birthday and the home. Home anniversary will be a different one. Different. Right. Because the birthday will say happy birthday and the home anniversary yeah. will be happy home anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Right. Same concept, for sure. Yeah. Um, but make sure that you're putting those in, in the contacts when you put yeah, your contacts in. Yeah. Right. Just like he won't send a birthday message if you didn't put in someone's birthday. So Kelly, um, maybe I missed this. So you can actually overlap... Um, contact, right, for a different plant, except for the long term. Okay, so I would never say, so the system will not let you assign, if you put them on a long term or midterm, mm -hmm. it will not let you put them on a different plan. Because these are part of these plans. Mm -hmm. And it knows that you don't want your client to receive two emails in the morning that's the exact same email. Yeah. It, it knows that, so it's not going to let you do that. Mm -hmm. You absolutely should not put somebody on the bi-weekly and the monthly. Because they're going to get an email, and then in two weeks they're going to get two emails. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to get an email, and then two weeks they're going to get two emails. Right. So don't do that. So put them on one or the other. Okay. Yes, absolutely have every single person in your database on the quarterly call plan, because at a bare minimum, you should be reaching out once a quarter. Minimum, right? So if you have them on long terms, they will not allow your quarterly plan. Because you're calling them more frequently than that. You're calling them in here. Every, let's count this up, 10, 20, 30 days. You're calling them once a month already in the plan. Mm -hmm. you're, you're calling them three times as frequently as this. And like, if you have like colleagues or anybody you know, you can put them on the quarterly. quarterly totally, plan. yeah. Okay. Right. Coldly, maybe also the monthly neighborhood nurture, maybe. That's your call. It's tough. Kelly, uh, on the monthly and bi-weekly, it yes. says all con all contacts, so you have to put all contacts in this, even though... Um, okay, so what did you... So I don't see where it says all contacts, so what are you looking at? On the right side, it says all contacts. Target is all contacts. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is um, saying that the target for this long-term nurture is conversion contracts. You're trying to convert these into a sold client, right? Mm -hmm. The target for um, quarterly call plan is clients or leads. If, if, um, right, yeah, right, this, these, these two are good for anybody, is what they're saying, it's saying all contacts, target, anybody, you can put downline people, profit share people, you can put your next door neighbor, you can put your brother, you can put anybody on these two, um, you probably wouldn't want to put, well, I don't know how close you are to your brother, you might want to put your brother on the board with all plan, uh, and you could, is your brother potentially a client or leave? I, I would want to put those more down here, though, if I was trying to convert them into business. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on smart plans? I, I guess I do have a question. Great. What are your emails look like? Yeah, so you, oh, thank you. So we made ourselves a contact this morning, right? Yes. At the beginning of class. Mm -hmm. Right now, I want you to go to the Buy Weekly Neighborhood Nurture and click Add Contact and search for yourself, and add yourself to this plan. Hmm. I'm already there, and I have three neighborhoods. 
So, okay, so remember the beginning of class today, if you added yourself, yeah. you added aprons to yourself. Yeah. Did you add three aprons to yourself? I guess I could. That's what that means. Or in the past, maybe. Possibly in the past, it doesn't matter. But I want you to add yourself to this because I want you to see what you're going to be sending up to your clients, right? right? Should we always test things out on ourselves yes. first? Absolutely. <laughs> so do you see your name on this list? Do you see a box that you can check to the left of your name? Did you check it? Did you say add smart play? I did. Then you're done. Great. Good job. Is there a reason why I'm on there twice? It means that you're in your system twice. So if when I asked you if you'd already put yourself into system, some of you probably had, and then you added yourself again. Oh, I guess I on one thing it says agent and the other one. So you create a tag on one and not on the other. It is okay. I can show you how to clean that up after class or in the context class that we have. We don't have time to go into that. Okay, so right I'm now. just going to click one, right? Yeah. Yeah, because if okay. not, you'll send yourself two emails. Okay. Okay. And your homework for the next 90 days is to... To do what? Thank you, Yvonne. Start to do <laughs> 10 minutes. Okay. Woo!
Any other questions on smart plans before we move to the sales pipeline? Okay. Sales pipeline, this is the class, sorry, so sales pipeline, um, otherwise known as opportunity. This is, if anybody can click on opportunity on your computer, please do so. Great, thank you. So opportunities, you should be showing you listings, buyers, and then leases. This is what I want you to start using immediately. Because by September 1st, you need to be really good at this. Okay. So in that same, you're blocking off time every morning or every afternoon to use command because you're adding contacts. You're also following up with what it's telling you to do. I also want you to play around with sales pipeline. I want you to, yeah, I'm sorry, otherwise, true enough. Um, so sales pipeline or opportunities, this is where you say, hey, these are people that have raised their hand as a lead. And it said, I want to buy, sorry, don't look at the screen, you guys. This is okay. Okay. Right. Where it's saying, so if you're looking at your screen, you see listings, you see buyers, great. Maggie, you can certainly do leases. If you're not a broker, please don't do leases. All right. It is tracking for you the people that you have, and as you put them in there, you can move them through the different stages. You can say that the first stage is cultivate, right? That cultivate, I believe, has three stages originally set up with it. And if you click on Cultivate and Listing, you're going to see the three different stages that are in there. Right? There's like Nurture. Yeah, I want you to click on Cultivate under Listings. Watch, thank you. Watch, Nurture, and Hot. Now, I personally, I was like, I don't get the difference in my head between Watch and Nurture. So I deleted Watch. Because to me, that didn't make sense. If it makes sense to you, do it. This is, you are the only person who's going to see these stages and these phases. So give this some thought about what your stages look like. And the important thing to think about is what do you do in each of these stages? You'll be able to set up a checklist for yourself on the actions. But as soon as somebody moves from a nurture stage to a hot stage, do I need to add them to a different smart plan maybe? Right? If somebody was previously on that long-term follow-up plan, hearing from me every 10 days because it's 36 touch, do I now need to reach out to them more frequently than every 10 days if they've all of a sudden become a hot lead? Probably, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make in my own checklist, um, add to hot smart plan because I'm going to be creating a hot smart plan the second that Keller Williams left me. Um, maybe I need to call every two days. Call again, call again, call again. You know, Whatever you want to do, um, that, might, that also might be send them a link to a video you've made for, hey, you know, I'm ready to buy a home. What's next? And, Hi, this is Cindy Franklin with Keller Williams. I understand that you're ready to buy a home. I'm so excited for this journey that you're about to like. Whatever you want to do with the different stages, you get to set that up here within your personal checklist. Yeah, this is going to start from scratch. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason that I need you to get really good at this by September 1st is because this is also where we are moving our green sheet commissions and where we are moving our compliance to on September 1st. I want to make sure that you get paid when you have hard work that you've done. And fingers crossed, everybody. Have hard work. Okay, great. Because, what does Lindsay think about this? I don't know. She's going to be able to access this? Not thing? yet. She gets to you next week. Compliance coordinators don't have access yet. Just okay. FDA do. So through dot loop, she has access for everything. I understand. And no, she won't, and we're working on it. Don't worry. Yeah, we're, 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 I'm very worried. I am very, 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 very worried. I just want to know how it's going to work. And I probably shouldn't be saying that loud. I am <laughs> super stressed out about this. Oh, okay. This is this is working for 49 states in the country, and it's not working in California real well. Huh. Right. Because we do things differently. So in most parts of the country, if you have enough business that you have a transaction coordinator, because think about it, if your house that you're selling, you're getting a commission on a $50,000 house, how much is your commission? Like what? $50,000 house. $50,000 house. Right, you're getting $1,250, right? Are you spending $500 of that on a TV? No. No. 
that's going to be just about compliance. So we can all make sure that we understand how that works. Okay. But for now, here's where I put in the details of the transaction. And in this case, for example, in this listing, I said that I received two different offers. So what I was able to do is create these two different offers, and I can now say, hey, let's compare them. And in the comparison, it's now putting them side by side so that I can provide this to my seller. As here's an overview of what's going on. Here's what their sales prices are. Here's how much they're bringing into down payment. Here's how much they're financing. Here's how much they're paying down as an earnest money deposit. Here's everything, including the pros and cons that I've included that I feel are associated with each offer. And then I'm going to suggest downloading this and either printing it out and bringing it with the offers when you do your offer presentation or emailing it to them and saying, hey, I wanted to give this to you. We're going to go over it together in depth, but this is a review of what we've received so far. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. It's very cool. I'm glad that you think so because I'm like, this is awesome. Right? Do not, do not, do not email this to them. Because if you email it to them, you don't have confirmation that the email actually went out. We're not quite sure yet how they can reply to it. Like, there's still some weird things that are on the email section, so download it. Uh, this, which is also great as commission, this is where you're going to be putting in your commission green sheet amounts so that I can make your commission demand. Again, we're going to go over that on August 26th to make sure everybody understands it. Notes is where I can put in any additional notes associated to this file in any way, shape, or form. And the timeline is also grayed out. That I honestly have no idea what that's going to look like, and I hopefully will find out soon. Does that make sense what I just walked you through? Okay, so practice this. What's the best way to practice this? Great, just create a dummy one like I did. I'm, I'm not a licensed real estate agent. All of these things that I put in here, these are, I do not actually have a seller named Testy McTester, right? I also don't have a buyer named Elmer Fudd. However, I have made loops for, or I'm still using my dot loop terminology. I have made files for them so I can play around with it, right? I created a fake offer from, I think I said my civilian was the agent, you know, so, so that I can see what it looks like. Hey, what happens if I click here? Um, there's a couple of things in here as well that we don't have in California. Um, and I'm trying to see, I want to say clean that out. But they do something in other states where you can do options, where people can, like, pay money without actually writing an offer, I think. I don't fully understand it. It's not a California thing, so I don't need to understand it. But there is something on here where you might see where's an option amount. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some state to do that, yeah. Don't worry about that. Just leave that blank ball on top of it. Oh, that's what it is. Thank you. I, I was like, I don't get it. We don't do that, though. So just leave it blank. There's a, there's that one line over your slate. And if they don't, because uh, that just happened to a uh, client that moved them. And if they don't follow through, they lose that option. Anyway, so we get to the point is there's going to be a line on here that doesn't make sense to you, just leave a blank. It is okay to leave one in blank. Okay. He doesn't have access to this yet. He's getting access next week. Okay. He will be the reviewer of this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But he hasn't even been able to see us yet. Only MCAs have. Not even my to get yet. There's Right, they're starting with the MCs because they know that we have to do a bunch of stuff on the back end work for it. So you guys can see. Um, let me go to my settings. Just so you can see what it's starting to look like already. Um, Cloud more settings. Compliance. And I'm going to go to the side. And the listing side. And we are starting to make our checklists. Kind of look like dot loop checklists, right? Mm -hmm. So again, this is probably not what it's going to look like for you. This is just, the, this is just us creating our checklists. But because of R, it's required. The CR condition required. Um, o is optional because we don't always have purchase agreement addendum. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. So this is so far. This is our list. Yeah, reds are required. Blacks are conditionally required. So if you click on that, for example, required if the property has an HOA. That's right. You don't need HOA docs if there's not an HOA. So the same thing. So you can't see the full. Uh, it is exactly. I took it straight from not and put it in here. There's no difference whatsoever. We don't have fully forms anymore. We don't. We don't have what? 
clue report. A clue. This is for the insurance claims. They don't issue them anymore. They don't. Yeah, they don't. Okay. It's okay. I will try to to confirm that. It has in the CDS. Then, ladies, sorry, because we're getting off topic. We have 15 minutes left. Of the next 15 minutes, do you want me to spend it on SketchUp, which is design, or on Task Manager? How does that tax for yourself? SketchUp. SketchUp, I've got one vote. So right now, SketchUp has 100% of the votes. That sounds good. Okay, 100% of the votes still. Okay. If anybody wants Task Manager, come and see me after class. We'll do it together one-on-one. Okay. All right, so go ahead and click on SketchUp over on the left-hand side. All right, so your homework so far is? Ten contracts a day, ten calls for people a day, and? And the opportunity. Play around with it. Create a fake one. Move them through. Add your, start working on your own personal checklist, right? Yeah. So, yeah, make Yvonne your buyer, Marisa, and Tess. Make Cynthia your seller, and just play through them. Yeah. Because, again, I need you to be real comfortable with this on September 1st. So, before we start, can we use this sketch house with the smart plan? Like we create a piece, yeah, and we put it in the smart plan. saying not yet. Okay. Yes, in the future, but right now the five smart plans do not have any custom marketing pieces associated with them. Okay. They will in the future for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everybody's on a page that looks something sort of like this, and if you don't see anything in the background, it's okay. All right. So the way that SketchUp works is you create templates. So you would make an open house template that has... One, two, three, four, Main Street, because each address or each time you do it over the house, you're going to change the price. So what you're doing is making a template with your headshot, your phone number, the background the way that you like it, so that in the future, it only takes a couple of minutes to customize these for each property, right? Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to link up with the MLS any day now. So we'll even be able to bring in pictures of the property. Right. Nice is right. I'm very excited about when that happens. All right. So, are you guys ready to make a marketing piece? Yes. Okay, great. So, you all see this plus sign down here at the bottom? Mm -hmm. You'll see this plus sign on a few different pages, and when you do see it, it means add, do something new. Add an activity, or in this case, create content. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a social media piece. So, click on social. Click on create template. And you're going to see the existing social media pieces templates that Keller Williams has already made for you. Oh, and you might have to log in again. That is normal on SketchUp. Okay. So, right now, you probably see that the real page looks just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to see that we are currently looking at Megacamp 2019 Facebook only. And if I scroll over to say Instagram, what's going to happen to that market, that Mega Camp 19 image? It changed formats, right? Because Instagram wants a slightly different format than Facebook. Facebook. LinkedIn wants a slightly different format. Twitter, slightly different format. So it's already made these custom sizes that are ideal for the social media site. And you have it's Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Stories, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. So going down the left-hand side, Yvonne, this is where you would see uh, some of those profit share pieces, and those are under either event invitations, because you said that you invite people to events, right? Mm -hmm. Or under leadership. You have way more than we have. <laughs> well, me, right? Leadership is an honor. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they only need leadership to leadership, though. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Um, if you guys want me to send you any of these, let me know. Um, okay, so let's go ahead then and start with open house. All right. Anybody in here doing an open house this weekend? Every week. Um, yeah, okay. All right. That's a perfect position. So I want you to actually make this for real right now. We're not, we're not messing around here. We're making a legit open house Facebook piece. Okay. So out of these five templates, pick the one that you like. It does not matter which, the concept of what we're about to do is the same for every single one of them. There's a the good one. Yeah. You like them, so yeah, I want you to pick that one then. I can, my computer is good. I can? Can you? Okay. <laughs> so you're going to see, this one has one image, white box, red box, one image, just white text, four images, a circle. 
circle in the middle. One image architecturally tied to the image at the top, and then one image gray gray. So you're just picking of those five, which one resonates the most with you? And I don't know, Maggie, I like someone with four pictures. I think it's kind of cool. So pick the one that you're going to be using for this open house this weekend. And those are our only choices. These are templates. These are your only template choices for Facebook for open houses. Oh, templates. You right. can create your own. You absolutely can create your own. We're okay. creating templates. But you have to start with something. Okay. Okay. So I just want you to pick one, knowing that we have seven minutes left. Okay. Can you spend more time on this later on your own? We can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. But I want to get the basics okay. there. <laughs> okay. So does everybody have one open except for Maggie who's computer spirit? Do you have yeah. You do. Favorite. Okay, so everybody have one open. Do you see the logo on here that says KWDBA name? Yes. Should that be there? No. No. What should it be instead? Our, Our logo. Yeah. So click on it once. You're going to see that you get like these bounding boxes around. If you've ever used Canva, this is just like Canva. Okay. So come on over on the left and click on logos. And do you already have a logo? Yeah. Yes. Great. So go ahead, and you see where it says, it's like a recycling logo, but it says replace. Mm -hmm. Click on that, and it will just pop in your logo on top of that logo. Mm -hmm. And it pushed mine down a little bit, so I just picked it. <laughs> so I want you to click on replace. So what I think Yvonne might have done, and I've done it myself, um, I'm just here, I go to logos, and I click add. And oh my god, it's huge, it's just in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. click delete on your computer. Delete. Once on the logo that you want to replace, yeah. and you do the same thing with other images too, just click once on it, uh -huh. go over to what you want to replace it with, right. and see where it looks like it's a recycling logo, but it's not a recycling logo that's uh -huh. replaced, uh -huh. click on that. Got it. Okay. And I don't like it. Yeah, and it might be a little small, it might be a little big, because our sizing of our logo isn't, because the one that was on there was longer and narrower, ours is a little bit more blocky, uh -huh. so, so it might just move it around a little bit. Um, now, this picture is obviously not a picture of the kitchen that I'm about to do, but I'm okay with that because this is still just a template, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to make my template more generic because I want to be able to, in a heartbeat of like, oh my gosh, I've just had an open house, I need to do it in five minutes, so I want something on Facebook. I'm going to make mine generic with not pictures of houses. I'm going to make mine more city-specific specific. So I've got my image selected. Come over to where it says company. KW stock images. And the search went away. Um, so I am making a list of the things I need to follow up with tech support on. There's now a couple of them. Um, so search in sketch house Images is gone. Um, mm -hmm. Add to smart plan from contact is gone. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult because normally you can search and you can say like happy couple and it shows you out of the thousands of pictures only the ones with happy couples. Right now I'm going to come down and and they also have lost the replace image option. Okay. So I said that I'm trying to make mine not be pictures of houses because I don't have houses of the house that we're doing. Okay. So remember, we're making a template. Oh, right. We are making a template that is all we are doing right now. Yes, this is just a template. You are correct that you will want to have a picture of your house when you eventually do it, but not yet. This is just a template. And this is certainly not the picture of the kitchen of an open house that I will most likely ever be doing, just because 
that would be a really, really coincidence. Right? So I'm just going to swap it out with a picture of this cute little family. Uh, however, the... There it is. Sorry. Weird, right? That it wasn't there at first? Did you guys see what happened? Yeah. Yeah, not sure why. All right, so I'm going to replace that. And it's a little thick. I didn't like how it kind of squeezed them in there. So I can double click it. And if you do that on your own system, you can double click it and see how it now allows me to move it around within the frame. See how I'm moving it around within the frame? But it still keeps the template, so whatever. Totally it does. Yes. Because this was made by a professional designer. Chances are we do not know marketing better than professional designers. Right? Mm -hmm. Chances are. Okay. So, okay, I'm getting there. I've got happy people. Happy people. Let me just swap out this one last one. I'm going to come over here. Oh, that looks cute. I like them. There we go. These look like people who live in the Bay Area who might want to buy a house. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm happy with my template. I'm now going to change the name of it. So please do the same on your own. Open house template. Up here where it says for each template. With people. That's for the name? Theoretically, yes. Okay. Two weeks ago, this was not working. And I can, from here, at this exact moment, click on share, and it will post it to my Facebook page for me. Right now, at this exact moment. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to do that quite yet, because this is just a template. But whenever you see share, that's what share does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say done. Oops, and I'm going to say save. That always scares me.
Right. If you're sending out email, would you log into MailChimp or Command? Command. 